Yo guys, I'm Nick from Produce School and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video I will go over the sound design of Julian Jordan, who just released a stem style sound set which is mainly inspired by Julian Jordan as well. If we have to describe his sound we could describe it as future big room or something like that. Basically it has distorted plugs and punchy bass lines on top of some punchy drums as well. But I will just go further with the video and show you some of his sound design tricks. The first thing I'm going to do is create a lead like Julian Jordan inside Serum. So I loaded up an init patch uh, which looks like this now. And first thing I'm going to do is open up an analog BD sign on oscillator A. And I want the unison on around like yeah, for unison, something like that. And I want this plug to be quite detuned, so I will just move up the detune to around 0 0.45, something like that. And then for oscillator B, we just want this default, which is actually just a saw wave, and we're going to set that to 5. For the detune, we will just leave it like this. So the sound right now sounds like this. So the sound right now sounds like this. Sounds more like a generic super style right now, but we're going to fix that ASAP. Then we're going to shape envelope one like a plug. So we're going to apply a plug shape on it. I can easily do that by pulling down the sustain to inf minus infinity dB. And then we will just put down the decay to around 600 milliseconds. Then I'm going to open up a filter, just a MG low 12 standard filter, and I'm going to link envelope one to that filter. And then we will get that plucky sound already what we're going for. Don't forget to apply uh, oscillator B to the filter as well. Easily do that by clicking B here in the filter section. Then we're going to envelope 2 and we're give, going to give it a very very short shape. You almost uh, should not see it like this. And then we're going to link this to the course pitch of both oscillators. And this will actually just give a click to the sound and it will make it more punchy. It will actually make it way more punchy. So link envelope 2 to the course pitch. Select Ctrl Shift and click on this like blue button so you will make it one way directional and then set it to 12 which equals to a full octave and we're going to do that for oscillator B as well As you can hear it already makes a huge difference last thing I'm going to do is turn on the mono and legato and put up the portamento time to around like 200 milliseconds somewhere in the middle then in the fix section we want quite a lot of distortion we want to squash the sound a little bit and we can do that by using the sign shaper distortion which will sound pretty bad in the beginning but i will show you how to fix that later on in the fix section so let's move this this to around maybe 55 percent it's already uh, more distorted, but it sounds quite harsh, but we're going to fix that with a filter. Because distortion basically just adds harmonics to the sound, it will also come with a lot of nasty frequencies that you don't want. And inside Serum you can easily like clean up a sound by just applying a filter, just a MG low 6, a very soft filter, and then just link envelope 1 to that. That's with the filter, and this, this is without the filter. So we get rid of the high, really squashed frequencies. Julian Jordan likes to add multiband compression to his sounds as well, and Serum has this cool function here, multiband compression. Move up the gain a little bit, maybe we can play with the threshold a little bit as well. 
as long as you make sure uh, like the lines here don't hit the red spot you you should be good if i put this threshold down two more you'll see this turns red and you will get clipping issues and stuff like that i don't really want that and i turn on the monologator mode because such a distorted sound uh, does not sound nice when two notes overlap each other but right now when i play two notes uh, at the same time it sounds like this if i turn it off it will sound very harsh like this yeah, it's just not good to listen to, so let's turn it back on. Select an EQ and get rid of some of the low frequencies. You really don't want them in your lead because you want to fill them up later on with your bass. And you can easily do that by select the low EQ type right here. You can change the resonance right here and just set it on 50%. And now we can just play with the frequency till where we want to cut. Don't cut too much because you will get rid of the mids which you actually want to like keep in the sound. So something like this should be fine. The last thing you want is a reverb and a reverb can be applied inside Serum. But if you want more control of it in your final mix, I would recommend you to do it uh, like in your DAW for example with a Fruity Reverb or a Valhalla Room. It should all work but it will give you some more control on the reverb. For now, I'm just going to use the reverb inside Serum. First thing I'm going to do is give it a bit more high cut and also a low cut. And I'm going to pull down the size and decay a little bit. Pin depth can be put up as well a little bit and the mix as well. We just have to hear what sounds good. So that's basically already it for the Julian Jordan kind of plucky lead, which he goes for in a lot of tracks. I know that he has quite some different uh, style of tracks, but this is one sound that you can hear a lot in his productions and that is also a lot of times the main lead in his uh, sounds. So that's why we like decided to recreate this one. So when I import the Julian Jordan melody from the project file we have in the destination pack with Sandworld, it sounds like this. We can also later plug with a metallic kind of top plug if you want to call it like that and it can be made pretty easily inside Serum doesn't make a huge difference but it does make a bit difference so we're just going to do it turn on the noise oscillator and select uh, metal tick one we're going to shape the envelope one a bit like we did in the previous plug and then just link it to the metal tick then for the fx section we want some distortion some compression no demand compression actually and some reverb, some very short reverb. But this sound is so easy. Oh wait, we have to put on this as well. So it just only plays one. On top of that, it would just add a bit more punch to it. So the first bass we're going to recreate is a saw kind of bass. On oscillator A we just want the default saw wave with three voices of unison and a bit less detuning as it's a bass we want to keep it a bit more clean. On oscillator B we want to do the same but just don't give it any unison just keep it like this and then we're going to put the octaves 3 down. I'm going to apply the same trick with the short envelope to the course pitch, which I'm going to do uh, pretty fast right now because I explained it previously. I'm only going to apply that to oscillator B because that just gives it a bit better effect in my opinion. So now it sounds pretty shit but we're going to add a filter to it. I'm going for a German LP filter and why I do that is because this one cuts a lot more of the high frequencies and they can really get messy when you use a saw as a bass. 
So when you use this, you really get rid of the highs, which then won't like interfere with your uh, lead. Envelope one is once again shaped like a plucky kind of sound, so something like this. And then we're going to link that to the German LP filter right here. Ctrl shift to make it like one directional. And now we're going to just play with the cut. So you already get like this the vibe of the sound we're going for. Let's dive into the processing. So the processing on this sound is fairly easy. We're just going to use distortion and a compressor. And we're just going to use the tube distortion because we don't want to squash the sound. So just use a tube distortion and link envelope one to that as well. And we're going to use a compressor with some multi-band compression as that is what we hear in his tracks a lot. Last thing I want to do is select mono legato on this as well. And that's basically it for this sound. When I import the MIDI from the Julian Jordan project file, it sounds like this. Next final bass layer is a very short and uh, like very punchy kind of bass and on oscillator A we want the basic mini uh, wave table and that's it for oscillator A already. Now we're going to oscillator B and we're going to use the saw wave for this and in the warp section right here we want to turn on the PWM mode um, right here and then like set it to around 58 59 percent and then your sound will be something like this turn down uh, oscillator a and b three octaves and i also want a noise oscillator with a bright white noise which is basically just white noise and then envelope two, I want to shape it very short and add it to this as well. Then envelope one has to plug kind of shape as well, just like always. Now we're going to use the MG Low 12 filter and we're going to use um, oscillator A, B and the noise filter. We're going to link those all through uh, the filter. The first thing we're going to do in the FX section is add some dimension. Just put the mix to like 2%, very minimal, and the size to something like this. That's what we want. We're going to add a reverb to the bass, which is quite weird on a bass. But if we just do a low cut like this, um, it could sound good. And then just uh, make sure the decay is not too long. Now let's add some tube distortion. Multiband compressor. And now we're going to shape the sound and get rid of all the nasty frequencies with a filter. Sound uh, directly just sounds completely different. It's also quite a weird technique to like filter out the reverb, but in this case, it just added a little bit more depth into the sound. And the last thing we're going to do is boost some of the highs in the EQ right here. Easily just select the middle option, the high EQ type, and then we're going to uh, automate the game. just adds a nice like top layer on it basically. Of course we didn't do post processing yet and I won't do that in this video but this is basically the sound design um, that is needed to create like a signature drop like Julian Jordan 
There's another technique I want to show you guys right now and that is reverb throws. So he uses a lot of reverb throws to actually shape his sound uh, as well. And we can easily do that in FL Studio. I linked the lead layers to a bus called Reverb and we're going to create a reverb throw on this. There are basically a lot of different approaches on this one and I will first show you guys the easiest way. So open up a Fruity Reverb 2 or some other reverb that you like. Give it a lot of decay, some high cut, and just play with it actually. You can just like, you can do some stereo separation as well. Um, and now we're going to automate the wet knob. Just put it down, right click, create automation. And if we now um, create like little throws towards our melody, it will sound like this. This is a very easy approach to it and it will almost always work uh, on this. He, Julian Jordan uses it a lot as well. But I want to show you guys a more unique and more advanced way to do this so you can really give your own twist to this. I don't know if Julian Jordan like really uses this technique but I still wanted to put it into this video as I already talked about reverb throws. So I'm going to tell you about the more advanced uh, methods right now. So what you want to do so what you want to do is open a patcher inside FL Studio and before we're going to use this uh, it needs some further explanation to it. So the patcher is basically a mixer channel inside a mixer channel if that makes sense. You can add an infinite amount of plugins in this and it will only affect like one sound. So it's basically what you see on the right here, those 10 slots. But then you have infinite slots, that's basically uh, the point of the patcher. What you can also do with the patcher is create wires between the input and the output, but also between different plugins and you can really get creative with it. The patcher is really like an extensive plugin and it has a lot of possibilities that I didn't know about till quite recently. So for example, if you drag this line just with the left click from the input to the output the sound won't be affected it will just function as a like it will just function like nothing basically but if you add a plugin between this and drag the wire like this this parametric EQ will like manipulate the sound that's coming into the patcher and then it will send the output from the EQ to the FL Studio output and it will like get back to you uh, as a listener. And what you can do with this is also create like different uh, wires for example. You can do stuff like this and now you double the sound and then you can get very very creative with it. But I won't get too deep in that, I can do a tutorial on it if you guys want to see it. But now I'm going to use the patcher for my reverb throws. So first of all just drag a line and add an EQ between it. Now just fairly easy just get rid of all the low ends just to make sure they are not in your like reverb throw. Next thing you want to do is open the reverb itself. I'm going with Valhalla Room because I really like, like the texture of the reverb. Make sure the decay is high enough so every time you like create a reverb throw there is some output coming from your reverb. And now we come to the creative part. So what we now basically did was the same as we did previously um, and that was more easy than this. But what you can do with this is manipulate the reverb itself and then automate the patcher to create your reverb throw. And I can like very easily demonstrate that by for example open up a fruity panomatic. And the panomatic allows you to use an LFO to like pen your sounds from left to the right. And I'm going to do that right now. But the fun thing about this, it won't only affect the sound itself, but it also will affect like the reverb output. So if I play the leads right now, it will sound like this. That will be what the reverb sounds like. What you can do then is just automate the patcher and create some reverb throws. 
just like here and then the sound will only be like bent when the reverb is there so it, it will just be more easy when I just demonstrate it and here now the reverb is bent and panning in reverb throws isn't that original many producers use that but you can definitely get very creative with this for example if I want to add a vibrato rate very high it will sound like this from now on you can just use your creative to be original with this but this is just a little trick I wanted to show you as I'm really loving it to use it in my production so I wanted to give this tip to you as it can be really useful for now this is the end of this sound design tutorial if you guys want a full track or a drop tutorial on Julian Jordan leave a comment below and we will check what we can do if you want to support the destination stem style pack Go to the link in the description. It's a stamped style pack inspired by artists like uh, Julian Jordan, Seth Hills, Loopers, and many more. We teamed up with Sandwills, aka Evolution of Sounds, for that one, and we had a blast working on that. So you have to check that out if you're interested. The link is in the description. Also, follow us on Instagram to don't miss out on any tips, tricks, or news. And for now, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.